What is good friends, we are here with a Smoke Drew's play of Steve Angelo vs. Poek and they started with black and white and we will rewatch the first few turns as Poek leads off with Jirachi versus uh, probably Scar of Mianjo that's gonna U-turn out or uh, potentially HP and predict the Landris but yeah we do see it's a rocky home of Landris and I got something throw up the rocks here or we, yeah I was about to say it could be a special guard show. I mean, he gets a crit on the slow game which uh, sucks for Poek that definitely mattered and yeah, now they're gonna exchange rocks, I was about to say, but <coughs> Poi U turns out on the guard from predicting a switch into Rodon. And Turakin is gonna go for a close combat. Blow away the T Tar, so the score is 5 5. Nice, easy early kills getting picked up here. And there's a um, Ladios and. Uh, not a Ladios. A Jirachi and a Tyranitar to check this Ladios. And I think that's a Specs Surf. And a bulky Jirachi. But I might be rolling my black and white knowledge is not the best. And yeah, especially since I'm like a few turns late, it's really annoying. So I'm gonna see um we're gonna see a pursuit slash crunch here. I could see Poi going for crunch, predicting the Ladios to stay in. Cause if uh, Steve Angelo stays in and predicts the pursuit and gets the play correct, he gets off some damage on Tyranta at least. Exactly, he gets a lot of damage and he does go for Pursuit. That still kills, so that's probably Bandit Tyranitar. And Ninja can go for U-turn here or HP Ice. I think U-turn is fine with Ninja, yeah. Other than that, if he runs... Rotom should be able to outspeed a Tyranitar, right? I will get uh, some people in call for the next game. It was a bit too hectic now, so since I thought this game would start in like 50 minutes, so let's go to Jirachi. As this might be the common Jirachi that is uh, kind of common in black and white, but he doesn't have rain, so I don't think it would be thunder. Maybe they, I think they were like Tebow and Psychic, but. I know they're on Thunder and Rain, I don't know if they're on t outside of Rain then. Yeah. This is where it sucks that I couldn't get some of black and white knowledge. I mean, I could get some on technically, but now I don't want to open up my Discord or Skype and have it in the way of the recording program. Or well, just in the way of the recording in general. I mean, this t doesn't do anything, so I feel like Poik will just sack it off. It pretty much gets outsped by the entire team, unless it's like a super slow road, or maybe it cannot speed that. Hmm. I do see uh, Steve Angelo potentially winning with his uh, Mian Chao late game. And if he can't just uh, spam high jump kick when he, if he weakens the landers a bit more. As he goes for Iron Hand and catches the Terrakion, so he was willing to uh, save his Tyranitar's father, I assume. Because I don't see what Tyranitar is outspeeding. This Terrakion is... Mm, is he double banned? Ban Terrakion, ban t I assume this Terrakion is like uh, Scarf. But yeah, Jirachi can obviously take any one hit from uh, Terrakion as Okay, that's not Scarf, that did so much. I think that's banned, yeah. So he's packing the double band core, band Tyranitar, band Terrakion. I mean, if that's not banned, that's like a minus defense Jirachi, which like... I don't think that's a thing. <laughs> You can go to guard from here. Yeah, this is the best of three. Most of you guys will know how this works. It's a uh, smoke tours, twenty-three playoffs. 
and the winner gets to choose if they play a Silent Moon or RS in the next game. As we did not see anything from this guard room yet, so it could be substitute so like Barry Swords Dance. Yeah, dual chop, okay, that is. I know it's used in a silent moon to potentially kill a Smeagol through the sash, it's like a roll to kill, so Smeagol doesn't get up any hazards. I'm not sure if Smeagol was used in black and white as a hazard setter. But yeah, it might just also be versus like months that have a have up a substitute to like Versus like opposing guard jump that is low and has a sub up, you can like break through the sub and then hit it again maybe. But that's just me like trying to figure out. I don't <laughs> really know anything about the black and white mana game. Besides that, I, I see Banta a lot. That's like the... And yeah, I see this common Girati set a lot. Um, actually, he was he only showed Iron Head. But in general, I'm just telling you that I... <laughs> The little things that I know about black and white. Yeah, I think he will have him power eyes on his main show, and I kind of want to run a calc if that kills the guard room because they're taking their time here. So we have a main show, and the problem is we have this is the uh, sun and moon calculator. I have to go black and white because in black and white, uh, hidden power is stronger. So let's go me and Chow, choice scarf. Okay, the only that's the physical set. So physical set, Hajin Kick would do 72 to 85. Okay, so I decided to go with Rotom. His Rotom was still healthy enough as Poi got a crit, but that's um, some justice because he got crit earlier on his slow king. So yeah, he's still kind of two hit KO the Rotom as he's probably going for Hydro Pump, get up some damage and yeah, this could be sand. I don't know if Sandval Gatchum is allowed in Gen 5. <laughs> All these questions. But yeah, I feel like it would be kind of weird if I just start the series with Game 2, so I want to catch this too. As this u turn is gonna come out here, I assume. Wait, he goes for Hidden Power Eyes now in case Poikin wanted to go into Landers, which is a cool play, yeah. As it kills the, um, it hits everything basically, yeah. And I could see Landers dying to this if this Minshaw. I assume this Minshaw is gonna be like. I don't know what the nature is called, I'm just gonna make it timid for now. And, uh, Kalk, how much hidden power ice does. Hidden power. Ice does. Uh, 69 to 81. If it doesn't have special attack investment, so it kills. If it's um, with a, if it's with like a minus defense or minus speed death nature that doesn't load a special attack. Yeah, this this is a roll if he doesn't have special attack investment, but it's in Steve Angelo's favor. Yeah, yeah, Mancio should just win the game. The guard jump should, um, yeah, we can run. Yeah, the guard jump is at twelve percent. What am I saying? Yeah, the guard jump obviously dies to an HP ice. Uh, okay, they're saying in the chat that Poi could predict the opposing guard jump with HP ice. Um, so. What they're trying to say is, I think that Steve Angelo, if he doesn't want to risk the roll, he can go to Guard Chomp here and get up some more chip damage on this uh, Landris or some more damage. So, like, Pork either switches his Landris out if the opposing Guard Chomp comes in and then he dies to HBI, it's confirmed because he takes another rock round of rocks, or if he stays in, he has to take a hit from Guard Chomp. So if Poik wants to predict the opposing guard you can go for HPIs, but I think you just go for the roll because the roll is in your favor if you are the a set that is not a minus special attack nature on Mian Chao. And they might even want some special attack investment, but I assume they're just gonna be max attack because they wanna hit as hard as possible with high jump kick. But the hint powers are really cool in uh, Gen 5 with 70 base power. As yeah, he gets the potential roll there. 
like maybe he had some spot tech investment and yep steve angel takes the black and white game and i'm gonna end it so i can upload this asap and i'm gonna be right back with game two and i will have someone on call so stay tuned for that thank you for watching and peace out